Down the road from me, there's an old hollow tree where you drop off a dollar and then you go round the band when you come back again. There's a jug of Mountain Dew. I call it that good old Mountain Dew. Hey, Motor Warriors, I didn't see you standing over there. Welcome to Knee Slapper Sunday. My last Knee Slapper Sunday was about when I lived down in Louisiana and it got me thinking about my girlfriend way back in them days and her mama was a dot in the wool Cajun and her daddy was from Buffalo New York so when she was near her daddy she sounded like a Cajun girl half time speaking French and when she was near her daddy she sounded like she was from Buffalo New York I mean it was something else but anyway she used to tell me stories about growing up down in Lafayette, Louisiana, and she told me about these two fellers that were named Clarence Boudreau and Keith Thibodeau. Now, Clarence Boudreau, she said, was a year or two older than Keith Thibodeau, and then therefore, you know, he was bigger. He was, he was kind of a big kid. And for some reason, he took it to notion that he was always going to be picking on Keith Thibodeau. And so Clarence Boudreau would walk up behind Keith Thibodeau and Clarence would say, Who that? And he'd smack him in the back of the head. Well, Keith would like, Whoa, man. And he'd turn around and see big old Clarence, you know, standing behind him. And he'd go, and then, and then Clarence would go, Oh, it's you, Coyon. <laughs> How you do, Pipsqueak? And then he'd push him and walk away. Well, the next day, Clarence, you know, saw Keith Thibodeau and walk up behind him and BAM! Who that? Smack him in the back of the head. Clarence turned around and, or uh, uh, Keith turned around and see big old Clarence Boudreau standing behind him. And Clarence said, Oh, it's you, cool young. <laughs> How you do, Pip Squeak? And he'd push him. Day after day after day, he did that. Keith was in front of his friends, in front of girlfriends. I mean, he did that for years. Well, eventually a day came where his mom and dad, you know, Keith Thibodeau's mom and dad bought a house, but it was on the other side of the bayou. And the nearest bridge was like 20 miles down the bayou from Lafayette. So, you know, he had to, he had got put in a different school zone, you know, school district. And, but every day, he'd walk to the edge of the bayou, and he'd look out and say, Hey, Clarence! Clarence Boudreaux! This is Keith Thibodeau! One of these days, I'm gonna grow up and be bigger than you, and I'm gonna come looking for you! And he did that, day after day after day. Well, he started getting bigger, and he walked up, to the bayou and started yelling as he got bigger. He started yelling, Hey, Clarence! Clarence Boudreaux! I want you to know I'm growing up, boy. My daddy is six foot five. My grandpa is six six. And I'm growing. And one of these days, I'm going to find a way across this bayou. And I'm going to come and I'm going to turn you inside out and hang you on a clothesline to dry. I hope you're ready for that day, Clarence Boudreaux. Well, time goes on and he does that every day as a ritual. He gets married and him and his wife build a house about a mile down the road from, you know, his parents' house. And he still goes up to the bayou and says the same thing. And one day he hears that they're going to build a bridge crossing the bayou right near his house. And it's not going to be for big trucks or anything. It's just going to be for local traffic to get up into Lafayette without having to go 20 miles one way out of the way. So he goes out that morning. He, hey, Clarence! Clarence Boudreaux! This is Keith Thibodeau, and I want you to know that right now I am six foot seven. My arms look like tree trunks, and I can pick up and hold over my head 400 pounds real easy. 
and they're building a bridge and I'm going to cross it on that day it's done and I'm going to come and find you Clarence and I'm going to turn you inside out and hang you on a clothesline to dry boy I hope you're ready for that day Clarence I'm going to get even well, his wife heard that, and she's like, man, Shad, just let it go, Shad. That was when you was kids, Shad. You don't need to keep holding that grudge, man. And he's like, you don't know what he did to me. Every day, every day, he torment me. He'd hit me and tell me in front of my friends. I lost girlfriends because of that boy. I can't let that go. He got to get what's coming to him, Shad. Well, he kept doing that every day in. Eventually, the bridge was finally built. And he said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And he says, I'll see you later, honey. I'll come back home as quick as I've done, beating on him. She's like, well, one last chance, you know, just stay home. Forget about it. He's probably a different guy. Oh, me, people like that never going to change unless someone take care of him. I'm going to take care of him today. And so... He goes over to the bridge and he's walking as he gets closer. He sees a sign that says, low bridge ahead, no big trucks. So he gets halfway across the bridge and he stops. And he kind of looks around and he looks up. And next thing you know, he's back at home walking in his house. And his wife says, oh, may look, Shad, I don't be so proud of you. You started to go. Your better self got a hold of you and you changed your mind. I'm so proud of you, Shad. And he said, no, that ain't it. And she said, well, then why did you come home? He said, I got to the bridge. I got halfway across thinking about how I was going to whoop him because I'm so much bigger than him. And when I got halfway across the bridge, I looked up. And Clarence must have paid to have that build bridge just built the bridge just for me. Because it said over the top of the bridge, Clarence, seven foot two. He's still bigger than me, Shad. <laughs> yeah! Oh, that there was a knee slapper. I tell you what. <laughs>